I've actually won this tournament three years in a row now, going for four peat this year. I'm up for the challenge. I'm, my game is feeling really good, even better than preserve when I won by five. All right, welcome to the back nine here at Northwoods Black. This is probably the most challenging section of the course. So lots of knowledge to drop. Hope you guys are learning something while I'm getting my practice in. Thanks guys. All right, that brings us to hole 10, 400 foot dead straight par three. We've had a lot of dog legs on these par fours, so it's nice to have a straight shot, give us a unique challenge. I'm gonna go with the forehand up the gut with the kind of a flippier, not really flippy, but straight ride that I'm gonna kind of force over on a flex forehand. And uh, really just try to hit this gap and get down there somewhere. But uh, yeah, really I'm just trying to hit, hit a nice flex on this, on this disc to get through the gap. It's hard to really get down there, you just gotta throw it really hard because you can't get the height. So you just gotta throw a low line drive with a lot of speed to get it down there. So that looks good. Might hyzer out a little bit, but, so yeah, I got all the way down there. I was happy with that. There's also a crosswind, so I noticed at the end of the flight, it kind of just went way right, but I'm probably got a 30 footer from the bush, which I'm totally fine with that. This one I'm gonna turn a little bit more, try to get a little more glide to the left before I kind of fade back at the end. Okay, that looks good. Yep, another good one. Two from probably pretty similar spots. As you can see that, I, as you can see that crosswind's kind of pushing me at the end of the flight. But like I said, that's fine. If I'm 30 feet, have a birdie putt, even if I'm in the bush, I like my chances. This hole's gotten a little easier over the years. This, this middle gap used to be a lot tighter. The branches used to be lower, and this long grass was tall. So the branch is low and you got the tall grass, it's hard to really get all the way up to the basket because you got to throw it low, but then you're not going to skip because the long grass just kind of Velcros you. <laughs> Ninja after that branch trying to get me. <laughs> um, but yeah, so now that the, the ceiling's opened up and this grass isn't quite as long as it normally is, it makes it a little easier to go up the middle. A lot of people used to see throwing rollers because that limb was so low. So both of my shots are in this bush like I expected, which is kind of fine. It sounds weird to say that like, hey, I don't mind being in the bush, but like this orange one right here is like totally fine. This is like only a 15, 20 footer that I can definitely make. So, and this bass is a little higher than normal. So you definitely got to make sure that you're, definitely make sure that you're uh, weary of that because when you have baskets up like this, a lot of people want to hit short, but most baskets come up to like my hip. So you got an extra like eight inches, almost a foot. And so you just basically have to treat it like an uphill putt, essentially. Hole 11, 380 foot par three, nice, slow, gentle fade to the right. And a lot of players are gonna throw a forehand. It really sets up for this gap really nicely. You got one middle tree that forces players to either go right or left of it. I like to go flex just left of it and kind of try to skip down to the green uh, right at 350, 360, try to give myself a putt. So I'm gonna throw two rives, try to go flex left of side of this middle tree you see down there, the little leaning tree. Just go just left of it and, uh, and give myself a putt. So I went just left of it, let's see if I can get a skip. Okay, that looks good. I hit the long grass as you saw, so that just kind of affected my skip, but I think I still got up there. But as, as you see, I saw a flex. I went flex left of the tree just like I wanted, kind of faded back. So let's try one more. Oh, that one went inside, but it should be still all right. See, that was a good shot. I just didn't uh, hit my gap exactly. I'm gonna throw one more shot. I'm gonna throw a little, fe a felon. Let's see a felon, how a felon does here. So that one was similar to that first one. Felon, you kind of would have to go in front of that tree because it's not going to have as much fade. It's a little straighter. So we'll see where that puts me. I'm probably going to throw the, the rive just because I want to make sure I get at least pin high on this hole. Uh, but like I said, the, obviously you want to hit this gap. That's the number one thing. Second thing is, are you going to go left or right of that tree? Because if you don't pick left or right at our level, if you're like, oh, I'm just going to throw right at that tree, nine times out of 10, you're going to hit it because we're, <laughs> we're good enough. And if that's the last thing you're thinking about on a shot, 
then your brain is gonna narrow in on that tree. <laughs> and that's not what you want. So definitely never uh, aim at a tree because the better you get, the more you're gonna hit that tree. <laughs> and that's when you know you're doing, you're doing, you're playing better and throwing better shots. I noticed when I was an amateur, I, me and my buddies would always be like, oh yeah, just throw it at that tree and you'll hyzer right around it. It's amazing how many times you'll smoke that tree. <laughs> uh, and that's just sports psychology 101. If the last thing you're thinking about is a tree, that's what your mind's gonna gravitate towards that. So this is the one you gotta go left or right of. So it looks like I did get eaten up by this grass. So I threw a great shot left of the tree like I wanted. And I hit this grass and then just didn't skip. Um, so that's a bummer. But um, normally that, what that does, it hits the dirt and it skips right to the basket. We'll see where my other two landed. Got like a kind of a weird straddle. Probably go with it and I just a spin putt here. So, cause I got this limb here and uh, it's kind of awkward to do my regular putt. So I'm just gonna do a nice, no, kind of my spin putt's kind of been a little bit nose up. Whoops. So it's giving me the better, whoops, hit the limb. That just gives me, when I do my spin putt, it just gives me that little better height. Cause if my, my regular putt, I would have to, kind of go right, right at that limb. I went right through that limb. So that's kind of why I went with that spin putt on the first couple. All right, hole 12, 1,050 foot par five. This hole is probably the signature hole out here at Northwoods. Really challenging for a five feels like a birdie out here because of how challenging this hole is but I'm gonna to try to show you how to get a four and try to show you how to manage this hole with uh, the best of my ability. So I'm gonna go with the felon off the first shot. And I'm gonna go with like a nice flex shot. So kind of a beat up felon. So I'm gonna throw it kind of at those middle trees and just know that the flippiness of my disc is gonna take it towards the middle of the fairway. And I think that where that camera guy's standing is a good spot, even just short of him. So I'm just really focused on hitting the gap with this disc and getting that natural turn. Oh, so I hit something at the very end, but I liked the shot out of my hand. It was a good shape. So I'm gonna try one more of those pretty similar shots. As you saw, I just kind of turned and it was gonna, it was gonna pan out at the very end. So I'm gonna try pretty much the same exact shot on this one. That one was a little bit worse, but it got a better result. Um, I mean, that's kind of how at disc golf sometimes, you throw a better shot, you get a worse result, and vice versa. Um, but I know the shot, what I want to throw, and you know, nine times out of ten, if I hit the fairway, I'm going to be in a good spot to get a four. So here's my first shot, and this is the type of hole to where if I, would, if I were to throw it here, I'm literally just going to chip up uh, to where my drive would normally land without hitting a tree. So that's why I'm just going to go to my second shot, where is a pretty common landing zone. Uh, like I said, if you don't hit a tree, which is hard to do on this hole because there's lots of trees in the fairway, even like right off the get-go, the fairway is so small, it's hard to navigate without hitting something. And so here's my second one. I hit a tree, but it ended up right past the short tee. And uh, it's no gimme from here. It's still, you gotta go up. This is probably like a 450 to 500 foot uphill, low ceiling, and it's just hard to hit the sweet spot. Um, so like I said, you gotta go into this hole knowing that five is a good score. Four is a great score. Four is almost like an eagle. On paper, it's a, it's a birdie, but um, uh, I would be surprised if we saw more than two or three fours on this hole all weekend. So yeah, obviously right in front of the short tee is a great shot. I, I'm gonna throw a rive. I'm just gonna kinda try to drag a ante flex to try to land kind of in that dirt spot where that hill is. And that should, if I can get on top of the hill, that's great, but it's really hard because it's kind of far from here. It's probably like almost 450 to clear on top of that hill. So. Just kind of try to throw it into that dirt spot and get a good skip maybe. Potentially have a chance to get a, get a look at a four. Ah, too low, but that's gonna be good. It skips. See, that's an, that should be a pretty high percentage five. I just got a really awkward run up. So I'm running up down and I gotta throw up, which naturally if I'm running down, it's gonna naturally wanna throw me throw my shoulders down into the ground. So this, this run up is really what caused me to throw it into the ground. And so this one, I'm just gonna kind of keep my shoulders up a little bit more and uh, hopefully I can get my height right because my, my line and, and my speed was great. I just threw it too low. So I was a little better, got a little bit better height on that, skip off the maybe dirt. 
So yeah, that gives me a chance at a four. Um, but that, that shows you like what a downhill slope will do on the first shot. Even the second shot, when you're running downhill, you're, you're naturally your shot's gonna wanna go right where you're running up. And so when you're throwing, running downhill, trying to go uphill, it makes it that much more challenging. So this first one, pretty low, obviously threw it into the ground, but no harm, no foul, because I didn't go off the fairway. But the fact that I'm this far below the fairway makes the second shot hard, because you have to throw it up, and there's just limbs everywhere. You're just, you're almost never gonna get up and down from right here, because it's such an awkward spot. So I'm probably just gonna would just lay up, throw like a nice harp, and just give myself the chance for, a, for, for an easy five, so. So. Yeah, that's just gonna put me right in the middle of the fairway up there and give me a chance to uh, give me that five, which is a good score on this hole. And then the second one skipped up a little bit further up the hill. And so from here, I'm far enough up the hill so I feel a lot more comfortable throwing a shot that I could actually get a chance to get a look at a four. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to attack the four here. You're going straight uphill, so this are naturally gonna wanna hyze their way out. And uh, it's really easy to throw it right in, in front of you, right into the hill, because you want to throw it kind of low, but you can't because you're going uphill. But um, I'm just going to throw, just focus on my arm angle and keep my disc on that line the whole way. Too high. So, I mean, that's just kind of like the benefit of being up top of the hill is you don't have to deal with this run up. I'm going to throw one more. Um, but yeah, it's just such... If you land on this hill right here, it's just so hard to have a run up and have a consistent shot that you can count on to get up there. That one looks way better. So that one I think got up there. Um, but as you saw, the first one, you know, if, if you don't hit the execute the shot perfectly, you could get it easy, get a big number six, start getting a six or a seven. Um, but yeah, great shots. You can land up here and have a way higher percentage of getting a four. Uh, but like I said, this hole almost plays like a par six, essentially, is basically how you gotta almost go into it. Five is a par on paper, but a, almost a birdie in a lot of people's heads. So this is where my kind of layup shot went. And this would be the shot kind of just playing for the five. Um, maybe I'll give myself a chance to throw it in here. Let's see. Got a little too greedy, <laughs> went a little long, but Oh, <laughs> gotta give the, take the chance, try to get the four. This hole is, I don't think I've ever fouled this hole in, in a tournament, and I've been playing here a lot. I've actually won this tournament three years in a row now, going for four Pete this year. So I'm up for the challenge. I'm, my game is feeling really good. Um, putting, forehands, backhands. Um, yeah, my game feel like it's the, even better than preserve when I won by five. And I feel like my game's even in a better spot right now heading into these next big tournaments but this is where my my uh third shot landed i have a would have like almost a circle's edge putt for four so this is a great one uh it is fourable i'll show you that i'll tell you that there you go that's hole 12. five is basically a birdie <laughs> all right hole 13 653 par four you've got like a slight dog leg snake left and then back right with a pond short so the tee shot, I would say, is the hardest hardest part about this hole. You have to throw like a flex to straight holding um, shot that kind of finishes left at the end. If you pull it right or left, it's basically an automatic layup because of the pond short. Uh, it makes people, forces people to make a decision if you want to be aggressive, and it really comes into play on your second shot if you're out of position. So you really want to throw in position, but it's really tough. This hole is, uh, you know, like I said, probably one of the hardest tee shots as far as par fours go out here. So. I'm gonna throw two criminals. I like to use that kind of that stump in the middle of the fairway as my aiming point. I know if I can go over that with the, with the right amount of speed then I can get into that sweet spot that I'm talking about. So just focusing on try to go over that dead stump, which was an old tree. So that's not bad. It's a little short. It's not what it's probably gonna end up being all right but it's not gonna be like in a great spot. So I just need to put a little bit more speed on it. I like the line, put a little bit more speed and then it should be in a better, better spot. That one is really good. So that, 
That one's way better than the first one, but the first one's still good. Um, that one's just pushed a little bit straighter. It just challenged the right side trees, which I don't really like that. I wanna make sure I'm far enough left to get into that open position every time and not risk hitting anything. So here's my first one, a uh, little bit short right. It's You wanna be kind of almost left of this little hump here. If you're left of this hump, it's in a better spot. Technically, if you're right of the hump, you're actually in the fairway, but you're not really, you don't really have an angle to the green. So I like to be left side, even if I'm in the bushes or in the trees, I don't mind that because it gives me the better angle into the green. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw a shot from here. Um, like as you can see, left side, because if you're right side, that tree, that bushy tree, blocks almost all angles into the green. So I'm gonna throw like a nice felon kind of like hyzer flip up. So that should take me over the pond, no problem. Yeah, and so I'm in a nice safe spot, no chance to go out of bounds. And um, so yeah, that's kind of what I'm aiming for is right around this hump and even left of it. So we'll see where that first one went. It should be right around the, yeah, first one's in even a better spot. So as you can see, you wanna be left. I don't even mind being in these trees over here. That's totally fine for me. Um, Cause like I said, it opens up the gap. The farther right you are, the more this tree's in the way, the more the pond's in the way and the more uh, variables you have to deal with. So I'm gonna throw a shot from here too. So yeah, that's good. As you can see, left of the hump is kind of what I'm thinking in my head of where I wanna be. I don't really care if there's a fairway here. Like I said, I'd rather be in the bushes and have a good angle than in the fairway and have no angle. <laughs> As you can see that I went over the pond, I made sure to go deep of the basket so I'm not have the pond, take the pond completely out of play and then have a nice birdie putt from here. But yeah, you make sure, for me, that's really what I'm thinking about is just making sure I'm long in the basket so that way I don't have to worry about going in the pond or anything like that. We got hole 14, 893 foot, par five, we got a tunnel shot on the on the first shot, then which brings us to a dog leg left that kind of goes down a straight corridor uh, of tight tunnel with lots of trees. I think the first shot, most important thing is you got the low ceiling and you're going uphill. So you want to control your height of your disc and obviously the line. Um, but I'm gonna go with a couple felon shots and uh, try to just start it off kind of where that camera guy is and just uh, fade left at the end. So that's pretty much where I want to go, pretty much in the perfect spot. I can probably almost attack it from there just, just to give myself as easy a four as possible. That's really the goal on this hole. Didn't see that. that was, did it go left? Uh, I, I did actually that was weird. Right. Oh, did it? Okay, I thought it went left, I couldn't tell. Um, but yeah, this one's not really threeable, par five. It's just really play for a four. And if you get out of position on any shot, you pretty much are just playing for a five at that point. So that's kind of the mindset going into this hole is just making sure that if you are out of position, don't force anything because that can turn into a six or a seven. Have the mindset to go for the four. And if you don't execute on either the first or second shot, be happy and be content with the, uh, getting a par because it's still a very challenging hole. All right, through the drive, the felon's pretty much in the prime spot here and it opens up the, first, the second shot. As you can see, this is a really tight, narrow shot on the first shot and the second shot and the third shot if you wanna get a birdie. Um, probably one of the hardest par fives out here. Um, but yeah, this one, I really wanna just hold this, uh, this anti-flex and then kinda of skip back right at the end. There's a little bit of pocket down there that I wanna to try to hit. So once again, just full controlling my arm angle to hit the line that I want. Uh, just too low. Hit the line, just didn't hit the height. So I'm gonna try one more here. Once again, too low. Huh. I wonder why I'm doing that. So I'm doing that, just something mechanically I'm doing that's uh, uh, forcing me to throw low. I think it's just maybe at the last second kind of doing, push, pushing my shoulders down. So I'm just gonna focus on kind of standing with better posture and that should help the height of my shot. There we go, that's way better. So you go down the gap and go into that little pocket that I'm talking about. Yeah, right in there is fine. 
even if I don't hit a tree or if I hit a tree, I'm not worried about it. I just want to be in that area, general area and then scramble for the potential four from there. Um, but if I throw too low, like I did that, um, those first two, I'm still in the fairway. I still hit my line. So there's some benefit in do, obviously always hitting your line. That's super important. Probably the number one most important thing. Um, obviously the height's number two. Um, but I'm still, from the first shot, I can still scramble and get a par, which par is a great score on this hole. You're not going to lose very many strokes. Uh, just like a lot of the par fives out here, pars are good on the par fives, whereas normally on the Pro Tour, pars are almost feel like bogeys because everyone throws so far and you're able to get so much distance on the first and second shot that birdie is pretty easy. So, um, But this one is definitely, the par fives out here at Northwoods are probably the more challenging than most of the par threes and par fours. So yeah, if I were to land here, it's more just a, a chip up and uh, get a five, which is pretty high percentage. Uh, but then once I get up here into the second, and the one I threw good, I'm gonna practice from here because I definitely feel like I can potentially get a four from this spot. Oh, it looks like I hit a tree and kind of rolled back this way into the fairway, but even if I don't, if I go over there, into that little bubble over there, I'm totally fine with that. That's totally uh, up and downable from there. So here's kind of just a real technical, challenging approach. The right to left crosswind. And uh, I just really want to try to enter this green, which is hard because there's a lot of guardian trees here. Ah, oh, I see two wides can hit the guardian trees. Yeah, I kind of already knew that. As soon as I threw it, it was just it was automatically too wide. There we go, that one's way better. I still threw it a little wide. I got lucky through the guardian trees, but it was a little better release on that one. So now we're gonna go over here where I normally would land if I didn't hit a tree coming in. So I'm gonna throw a felon. I'll throw a felon here just cause I wanna throw it, keep it low and just kind of skip it up. Cause we got this low limb right in front of us. So I really wanna just skip it up. It's like that, kind of get up there for a nice putt. Um, because you can see I can't really get height on it because that limb's kind of right in my way. Um, so yeah, a lot of your, this hole is the type of hole where you're never gonna land, almost never gonna land within the same radius of a sweet spot every time. So it's good to scramble and uh, play shots from pretty much all different sides of the fairway to get comfortable uh, on this one. Cool, so now we got the par fives dialed. I think we have, we don't have any more par fives coming up, but par fives, pars are like birdies out here. All right, hole 15, we got a par four. We got 650 feet, pretty much dead straight. OB line on the left-hand side. A lot of people are gonna be throwing uh, backhand Annie with the mid-range or a fairway driver. Just kind of keep it dragging to the right. I'm gonna try one of each. I do like the ante because you can kind of just hold the ante on the left side of the uh, fairway and just kind of drag it to the right. So I'm going to try that. Just focus on keeping the one angle shot. Keep the hole simple so you're not having to um, yeah, mess with the left hand side because that's the, really the biggest, most important part of this hole. So yeah, just keep it to the right the whole way. I don't want to I don't want to mess with the left at all. So I'm going to try one more forehand, kind of like a similar shot. Just focus on just going in the right. I don't even care if I'm in the trees. At least I'm in the fairway and I'm able to scramble and have a chance for a birdie. That shot's good too. This is going to be more in the middle of the fairway, but um, challenge the tree lines on the left. I don't really want to be that close to the trees, but it's all right. Still able to, I'm in the fairway on both of them. so. Just kind of depends on the wind, which decision I'm going to make for the tournament. Got kind of unlucky to land my disc right underneath this tree. Um, but I'm going to try to navigate it here anyway, just to practice my scrambling. Um, yeah, normally I'd throw a sidearm, but obviously this tree's right in my way, so I can't do that. So I'm just going to try to throw a backhand Annie, <coughs> Annie up to the basket. I got to give it height because I'm going uphill and I'm throwing a putter, so I can't get that much speed. So I have to make sure to throw it higher than normal. So it worked out pretty good, about 30 foot or short. Now I'm gonna have to go this kind of backdoor route where I'm just going just left of this tree in the sunshine. 
And there's OB on the left side, so I want to make sure to keep it on hyzer the whole way. So I just, yeah, that's the problem with that shot. I literally just hit that tree. I was an inch from being a good shot. Now I'm out of bounds. I have an automatic bogey. So that's kind of why I was going to go with the backhand ante. So it took away that, that what it could happen right there. So certain outcomes like that, I'm glad that happened in practice. So that way I don't get, start wasting strokes in the tournament. So surprised. It's never surprising because that happens all the time. But a lot of people hit this tree and trickle right OB. I don't know if it's this hill that kind of just, everything just fades back left. All right, hole 16, 330 foot, par three, downhill. We got kind of OB, not OB, but a casual kind of bunker to the left. You really don't want to be left. I like playing to the right. You see the wooden kind of posts. I like to kind of be in there. I, I don't even mind hitting those posts and kind of dropping uh, just right in there, like 20 feet short, because it's really easy to go long on this hole. So I'm almost really trying to hit that those wooden posts and just kind of drop there and have a, a putt with no slope. No, You're not going to really putt back down the hill. So that's kind of what I want. Wow, that one just turned over, hyzered out. But So this looks like there's a, kind of a wind going that way, so I'm going to kind of naturally fight it with my arm. And I'm really just I'm really just trying to throw down because obviously it's a, a downhill shot, so you want to throw down to get the better line. There we go. That's way better. So I didn't throw it a little bit too low. Throw that. That's still all right. I'd rather. I'd almost rather be putting downhill up on this one. I want to be up on top of the hill, but if I can throw a shot that's just going to get down there and hit those hit those posts. I haven't done it yet, but. But yeah, that second one kind of is the shot. Obviously, I'm just not really committing to the shot right now, but kind of turn it over with your arm, try to hit those posts. And even if I throw it a little higher, I'm gonna get up on the green. This is the spot where I normally would land. I didn't commit to it on those shots, but this is kind of just the general area. Hit these kind of wooden posts and kind of drop here. It leaves you not, no death putt on this hole, which is important. You can be aggressive and not, not worry about going past the basket or down a hill or anything like that. So yeah, obviously I want to get up on top of this green, but if I throw it too low, hit the line and fall here, I'm totally fine with it. And I like the forehand because it goes away from this hill. If you see all these, this creek and everything, if you're throwing a backhand hyzer out, you're going way down there with no putt. Forehand, in my me if I uh, saw it off a little bit, I'm still having a putt for birdie. All right, hole 17, we got 320 foot par three. We have two gaps. We got a left gap for like a backhand hyzer flip, and we got a right gap for like a forehand flex which is what a lot of people seem to choose. I'm gonna go with the harp. Um, I'm gonna try to keep it on the nice flex angle, which is what I feel like I do pretty well. And I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna throw a BT hard harp and just keep it on, keep my arm angle like I've been talking about all day on this nice flex line and get it to come out at the very end, so. So there we go, that looks pretty solid. little short but I'm still there's like a casual creek up there but it's like I said it's casual so it's there's no problem landing in there try one more a little more flex a little more power on this one maybe there we go that one's better should be a lot better oh I went underneath the bridge <laughs> that's still right there I mean that's probably only like uh, 15 20 feet I'm gonna try like a soft felon as well just kind of see what kind of speed I like coming into this green like it's kind of, it's either like a firm, nice, hard harp shot or like a soft kind of like 70% felon shot. That one looks great too. So I like that a lot. So I kind of feel like I like the felon a little better just because I don't have to feel like I'm throwing it so hard. And that's something to think about when you've got distance control shots. Um, some shots I feel comfortable, like depending on the distance, like just crushing a putter because you know you're not going to go far and you don't have to feel like you're babying a shot because sometimes it's harder to hit gaps when you're like having to throw like a 60 percent shot versus throwing like a nice firm 100 like 80 or 90 percent shot with like a putter that's why a lot of people feel more comfortable hitting gaps with a putter versus like a driver you're because your timing is a little bit different when you're toning down on a driver versus powering up on a on like a putter it's more like a 
people feel more comfortable because it's like a driver shot. It's like you're throwing full power, but you're only going 300 feet. So that's uh, kind of my uh, thought process through that shot. All right, hole 18, 703 foot, par four. This is a great finishing hole. We're going uphill pretty much the whole way and we got tight gap right off the bat. We got a tight, narrow, off-centered gap, which is obviously a challenging gap to hit, but <clears throat> I'm gonna go ahead and throw a forehand. I feel like the forehand shapes this hole to get the most distance and give myself the best chance to get a three. So I'm gonna have to focus on just keeping it. It's almost like, I'm not really throwing a flex, I'm really just throwing an ante to where it's holding left the entire way. I'm not, I don't really want it to hyzer out too much until the very end. That's pretty much perfect. That might be the, one of the better forehands I've thrown in this hole. I'm gonna throw one more. Pretty much the same shot. This one's a little more stable, so it's gonna come out hyzer out a little bit more. Ah, uh, that one was just low. Same exact shot, just a little bit low, same angle, same everything. I really liked it and just threw it too low. And that's easy to do when you're throwing an ante because what's gonna happen is it's nasty. It wants to go into the ground unless you throw it high like that first one. I hit the line perfect. I just wanted to glide, glide, glide. Um, so yeah, this shot fits my eye really well. Um, you can obviously throw a backhand, but the backhands like to skip because this hill kind of is going right to left. So when you hit the ground, it wants to skip and go into the bushes, whereas the forehand, when it's coming out, it wants to fade back and get into a better spot, I feel like. So, yeah, I like the forehand. All right, so I actually almost went too far past the fairway, or past the landing zone. Landing zone's here, I went about 20 feet too far. I can still throw a shot, but uh, I, I just threw it a little far, which is all right, I'll throw a shot from here anyway. I'm gonna have to kind of throw through this Y gap in the tree. Um, but yeah, this is one of my better drives on this hole. So yeah, I think that's pretty good. I'm gonna throw one more. I'm gonna throw one more actually from like a spot where pretty commonly I would land. So I'm gonna throw it from here. And you're going uphill, so you're gonna have to, this is not gonna go forward, it's gonna go up. So you have to feel like you're going, throwing it past the basket to get the right distance. Oh, I clipped that, dang it. Cause that was a good one. That one was probably better than my first one even as far as the release and everything. Yeah, it hit a tree, but I don't get too caught up in results. I get caught, I like to, th uh, I'm a feel player. So if I feel like I'm throwing a good shot, yeah, if I hit a tree, it's a bummer, but it's, uh, results can be misleading for sure. Everyone says disc don't lie, but it definitely can lie. <laughs> when someone throws a shank and gets through all the trees, that's, uh, doesn't, it feels good because you get, get lucky, but it doesn't feel good as far as like, can you repeat that? That's, uh, not high percentage, we'll put it that way. So I like to throw the high percentage shots and um, I do everything I can to replicate shots that I know are gonna work out in the long run, not in the short run and getting lucky. So my first one looks like it gave myself a chance for a birdie putt. Yeah, sweet. I've just played out my both of my first shots and it looks like I'm gonna get a birdie, which is great. T great way to finish on this course because this is uh, very challenging. Sweet. So there we go. Thank you guys for joining here in Northwood the Black. Uh, showed you the challenging course, probably one of the most challenging courses we got on tour. Hopefully you guys learned something. Hopefully you guys are ready for the week. I know I am. And we'll see you next time at Idlewild. Thanks y'all.